This week on Florida's Fourth Estate, it's a new year, but Floridians are up to their same old tricks, like teaching a parrot how to pull a fast one. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's his little parrot. Blame it on the bird, how one guy had to prove he wasn't holding anyone hostage in his home. And no juice for you. A lot of people come here for the holidays, too, and that's when people started realizing, like, where's my orange juice? A refreshing Florida tradition dries up because it's too expensive. And did you get a fancy new gadget or security system for Christmas? Why, you might want to read all of the instructions and warnings before you install it. If you get a device and you can access it from outside your home and it does some monitoring of private information, realize that your private information is being basically broadcast to the public internet. We get the lowdown on how high tech is hijacking our privacy from UCF professor and tech expert Paul Gazillo. Let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Florida's Fourth Estate. I'm Ginger Gadsden. You are, sir? Uh, hi, my name is Matt. It's good to meet you. <laughs> it's good to oh, see it's you. A pleasure. Yeah. yeah. We're starting off a brand new year. We've got lots to talk about. Oh, yeah. And you know, you probably got a bunch of stuff for Christmas, right? Mm-hmm. A bunch of tech stuff. You were gadgety. probably real excited about it, <laughs> and we're going to ruin that for you today <laughs> with our friend okay. Paul Gazillo, yes. UCF assistant professor. He's going to talk all things tech, and we probably are going to be frightened and maybe ditch some of the tech stuff that we got for Christmas maybe. after we talk to you a little bit. But I'm excited to get to know about some of the stuff that scares you, some of the stuff that we don't even understand the power of what we have in our own homes sometimes. And uh, I think it's going to be pretty eye-opening for oh, yeah. a lot of people. I'm so, excited to be freaked yeah. out. It's going to be good, Paul. Well, then this is the show <laughs> for you. But we start, as we always do, with crazy Florida stories. That is do. that redundant, so, crazy Florida? Yeah. yeah I mean, there's of. some non-crazy Florida, mm, but few. we just don't talk about it. I know. <laughs> so imagine you're listening. You're at your house. You know, you're maybe in the backyard doing something, and you hear this. Help me. Help me. <laughs> I'm trapped. Like, that you hear a yeah, voice Yeah, that's what you hear. Yeah. So you're freaked out. You, th- you picture, like, a child in a cage or something. Or a little old lady who's been kidnapped. Yes. That's not what happened, though. The, the cops it? show up to the house. They find this guy. He's out working on his car. He's like, what are you doing here? They're like, we heard someone saying, help me. Your neighbors are complaining. He's like, oh, I know what this is. Walks the cops into the house. Turns out, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> It's his little parrot. Oh. Help. They thought it would be funny because they've had this thing forever. So he was a kid when they got it and they trained it to say, help me. Like oh, to creep out wild. their parents. Uh-huh. Well. And so now it got the cops called on him. So he had to actually take this parrot over to his neighbor to prove I don't have children in cages. In my house. <laughs> Just yeah, a bird. It's a weird excuse. <laughs> that was my parrot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you would say that if yeah. you were a kidnapper. Right, yes, exactly. exactly. It's yeah. like, okay, how many other parrots do you have in your basement, sir? <laughs> Let's take a look around. That's yeah. just, yeah, it would freak me out. I wouldn't know what to do. I, I would definitely call 911 because yeah. you think somebody needs help. Me too. Oh, well. It worked out. It did. This, this it time. did. Yeah, this time. And it has a funny ending. All right, something else that's not so funny that a lot of people are going to miss. And you, we were just talking about this. You were born and raised in Florida. Florida guy. So yeah. you never got to experience this. When you come and you visit and you drive across the state line, one of the things you really like or enjoy, you stop at the visitor center and you get your little thing of orange juice. Has this ever happened to you? I, oh. I drove in. I, I moved here last year and yeah. I didn't even see it. I, didn't I think they either. stopped. They probably stopped by the time you drove. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it, people stopped and they didn't even realize. Well, the orange juice. It's a four ounce cup of orange juice that they would give you and say, hey, welcome to Florida. This is what we're known for. So you're going to drink orange juice all day, every day, because this is how we make her living. Well, they cut it out because it costs too much. $250,000 a year, which I don't feel is a lot of money because, okay. Uh, You don't feel like that's a lot of money? No, it is a lot of money, but not for the state of Florida. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, seriously. It's the one thing people enjoy. They didn't even realize it was missing because a lot of people come here for the holidays, too. And that's when people started realizing, like, where's my orange juice? And no, sorry. you got to bring your own. You and I are going to disagree on this. I, but, yeah, we are. Because I feel like if you're paying 250 grand a year on orange juice, that's a little much for me. Do you know how many people visit Florida how many cups? How many cups is that? That's a lot of cups. You guys <laughs> have a lot of questions. Just lot. Go- <laughs> how many gallons of orange juice is this, Ginger? Tell me. 
I mean, just squirt. Take a little dropper and just squirt orange juice at me. Just tell me. I'm in Florida now. Here's some juice. I have never once gone to Georgia and they give me a stinking peach. Like, if you live on the border, you could just live on our orange juice. That's um, not fair. Listen, <laughs> you know why you don't get peaches in Georgia? Because South Carolina grows more peaches than Georgia. And I don't know why Georgia is called the peach state when South Carolina, my home state oh grows more now we're getting off <laughs> <laughs> sorry that's all i want Welcome to say to about the show, that Paul. <laughs> <laughs> all right so anyway it's sad that that's gone away it is sad here's a really weird one for you let's get that floridian of the week kicked up and now your floridian of the week should All you right. apologize first for what you're about to say? Yeah, I'm going to apologize for what you're about to see. <laughs> oh. Because we have video. I wa you know, I don't uh, even really want to focus on, uh, not, and I'm not saying anything uh, uh, negative about, about this no, woman. I'm no. not saying you're going to see that. I'm saying we had some, uh, there was police officer cam. Uh, this woman got arrested. Uh, officers showed up to, the, to this woman's house. All right, it's hard for me to even get into this. This is so gross, Paul, so bear with me. Uh, apparently, this woman keeps a bucket of human feces in her house. Let's just start it off with that. Okay. Okay. Her landlord came. Apparently, they were having some She's sort of dispute. She's covered in liquid, so listen. basically feces. Because I was running. Yours is dried on your face. Oh god. She took Oof. The poop. Oh no. And rubbed it all. And then she dried it on your face. What? No. So her story's falling apart here as you're watching. Uh, basically, the cops show up. She said her landlord threw poop all over her. You can see she's covered in it. If you're just listening to this, she is just covered in brown. And she has <laughs> dried poop on her cheeks like war paint. That's not rouge. And that is not rouge. And so, look, I know uh, people go through different things. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to... You you're know, not judging. I'm not judging anyone or trying to make fun of the situation. I really feel bad for the police officers in this situation who show Bingo. up. And now they have to decide, like, he has to figure out whose poop is more dried to, to decide who started this. <laughs> and he's like, it looks like war paint on, your fa on her face. Like, she decided to yeah. paint it across her cheeks. I and know. then she chucked, he, apparently the other lady who we are not showing, the victim in this case, was drenched, drenched way it. worse. Uh, I mean, I feel I do feel bad for the cops because now he's in a biohazard situation that he wasn't yeah, prepared no. for. That's just terrible. And yeah. just just thank your local officers because they deal with so much. You know what? Oh yeah, it was a crappy, <laughs> it was a crappy situation. <laughs> Paul, you deal with college kids. I'm sure that I'm sure you've looked like that they, before. They show up all the time like this. Oh god, don't give them ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, I think I have more questions about the orange juice story. Still, yeah, I, right? still have more questions about that compared to that one. <laughs> yeah. I, but, but still, I'm still mad about the orange juice not being distributed, and we're just gonna hey, agree to disagree. Save us 250k. <laughs> I'm just gonna go to the border myself with my little jug of orange juice and give people a little. Oh, taste. I would love to see you do that. <laughs> While you're getting your orange juice ready, let's introduce Paul Gazzillo. We're so excited to have you on the show. I'm excited to be here. Everybody has their new toys they're messing around with, um, and you focus on technology. You know, you kind of, before we were talking, you said you know how the sausage is made. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which is a reason why I kind of avoid some of the, uh, some of the, the newer gadgets. So about me, I'm, I'm, I'm a professor. You know, I, I teach, I do research. Mm -hmm. We really focus on kind of emerging security threats that are, you know, we're not looking at stuff that's happening now. You know, there's other security practitioners doing that. We're yeah. looking at where the security threat's going to be in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I still really enjoy technology, still really enjoy security. So, yeah. you know, I just keep keep uh, abreast of all these. Uh, okay. So yes. a lot of people for the holidays, for Christmas specifically, got like security cameras and it's like you're oh, giving yeah. it to a loved one thinking, I want you to be safe and I want you to put these cameras all over your house. <laughs> Let's start with what's the problem. Well, sort of high level, the problem is, you know, security. Well, there's no there's no 100 percent security. Mm -hmm. So just there's sort of like security theater. You know, you put up a security camera and you think, OK, now I'm safe. Well, mm -hmm. it's not going to stop anyone from breaking in your home. You're going to see them run away with all your stuff. Yeah. Maybe maybe the police can identify them if they didn't cover your face. So security is really all about risk management. You know, what's the cost you're going to give up and what benefit are you going to get? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think one of the problems with a lot of these gadgets is the costs aren't typically well understood. So in the, the Amazon Ring case where uh, attackers were able to break into a lot of people's cameras and you know creep out their children, oh, yeah, watch their children, children. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that risk was maybe should be on people's minds a little more. That anytime you have a device, basically a surveillance device in your home and you can access it from outside your home, mm -hmm. that means that's an avenue for attackers to potentially to also in 
yeah. access. Well, how, how, sorry, Ginger, how yeah. easy is it for someone to hack into that? Well, it depends. In this case, this wasn't <clears throat> this wasn't really a targeted attack towards, as as far as I can tell from the the ring statements mm -hmm. and from security analysts. This was more of a shotgun approach. Let's look for people who have weak passwords or mm -hmm. passwords where we can easily guess them. Uh, and there was some attackers who basically just shotgunned a bunch of people's ring cameras because they're you know they're they're available on the internet. You yeah. if you can access them from outside your home, anyone can access them. Yeah. Uh, and then they just tried a bunch of known usernames and passwords and were able to get into a bunch of them. Yeah, I mean, but, okay, so is there some way you can disable that or that's the whole thing? You can't. That's how yeah, you get in, so that's how that's they how get works. in. Yeah, it depends on the model. So there are, there are if, you, if you're more sort of interested in tech, you can set up your sort of wireless router to kind of block outside access mm -hmm. to devices. Uh, but these cameras are typically set up to be easy for users. Yeah. So the way they make it easy is sure. it calls home to Amazon or to whatever uh, server is is managing your mm -hmm. camera just to make it easy for you to access. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're not using good security practices, then... Um, Meaning yeah. a, a hard, tough uh, a password. Something yeah, hard so in this case, one of, the, one of the simplest things to do is just to use a different password on every website, which oh. sounds... Oh. I How know, am I going to remember you, that? You've lost it. me I know, already. I know. You've lost so me the, already. Well, the way, we, the way you can do this is there are password managers that will... You know, this trades off having to use the same password everywhere with... You just remember one password yeah. to your password manager. And a lot of devices like, um, you know, your cell phones, mm -hmm. Android and iOS, yeah. they have these built in, these yeah. password managers, yeah. and they'll automatically generate a unique, very random, long password, which is what you need to prevent people from being able to guess your yeah, password. Yeah, and, and, or they just use your face, maybe. The, 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 the phones use yeah, your face Yeah, the phones ID. use your face, yeah. to, but yeah, to get yeah. into all the other stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. so it makes it yeah. easy so you mm -hmm. don't have to, to you know, yeah. so you just yeah. remember one password. And mm -hmm. for most people, this is... This is a good trade-off to make because if your phone is stolen and somebody gets your password safe, yeah. then you know then they have all your passwords. Yeah, sure. But for these kinds of non-targeted shotgun approaches, mm -hmm. uh, just yeah. having unique random passwords is, it really is the best helps. way to go. Yeah. yeah. So we have a lot of cameras in our houses. We also have a lot of microphones. All of a sudden, how oh, do you? Yeah. Uh, it, documents Everything. have been released about Alexa's listening all, and recording. Okay. Yeah. Right now, if Matt and yeah. I have a conversation about Matt, you need to wear some Spanx because your suits are starting <laughs> to look a little tight. That's probably we true. will we will start getting ads about Spanx or yeah. some sort of diet app or wh or whatever. Is yeah, there something I'm, to that? I'm not yes. sure. So I've seen two different views on this. One is it might just be that you're being surveilled, all your internet activity uh, is being surveilled all the time anyway, so mm -hmm. they're able to predict what you want to buy anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, the other the other side is, yes, there's audio devices listening and using that for marketing purposes. I don't exactly know what the truth is, but what we do know is that in order for these devices, any voice activated device like a smart TV, Alexa, any home devices, your phones, if you have it enabled, they have to be listening all the time in order to that's catch. That's how they know you're yeah. talking to yeah. them. So, you yeah. know, Alexa's always listening, but you just activate her. She just lets you know, OK, yeah, I've been here. It's yeah. me all along. <laughs> yeah. And it turns out that these are I, I think everyone is sort of agreeing without reading. You know, nobody reads these many page privacy oh, yeah. policies, but it's just you like agree. 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 Yeah, agree and, you know, agree to have all of your content sent to not just the company, but sometimes third parties who are, you know, they're reviewing it for trying to improve the technology, but they still I mean, have. If the yeah. agreements weren't 20,000 pages long, yeah. I might read all the way through. Yeah, Make it a yeah. page long and we'll all know what we're signing yeah. off on. That's but why they do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And exactly. they have a lot of legalities to cover. Yeah, that's okay. true. Okay. It's easy to say this stuff <laughs> is scary. Don't do it. But it's hard to actually live that out, like, sure, like you're sure. in the Stone Ages. Sure, what sure. do you actually go without, Paul? Oh, me. Y uh, you personally. So any sort of 24-7 listening devices, I go without. Okay. Any devices that do, actually any of the camera and microphone stuff, maybe I'm a little more paranoid, but any of the stuff that can be accessed outside my home, I don't use. Oh, wow. Uh, but I have a little tech skill, so I can set up my, uh, I can set up ways to get into my home that don't use, don't rely on these third-party services. Uh, now yeah. I just want to follow you around. <laughs> I want you to come to my house. I'm not. I'm not that paranoid. But there, yeah, there, the, the problem is, it's just not made easy. So you, you yeah. have to be like, and even me, knowing knowing some of the technology, I, it's not my full time job. I don't want to have to do this all the time. Sure. It's just that the defaults are sort of always on, always listening. You can access from outside your home. Yeah. Those are the defaults. So I try to. You have to take yeah. steps to not do those. Okay. If you had to give all of us one piece of solid advice except oh, okay. for the strong password right we all know that 
what would your piece of advice be when it when it comes to like just tech items that we just think are oh, oh it's yeah. friendly it's fun it's cool and that's a good question i think it's i think it's really just being aware of the risk so if you get a device and you can access it from outside your home and it does some monitoring of private information realize that your private information is being basically broadcast to the public internet and my advice to you would be you take that into take that into account when you're deciding whether to use that device. So is it worth it to be able to, I don't know, order more toilet paper from Alexa to have 24-hour listening? Is that worth it to you? <laughs> wow, when you put it you know? that way. I mean, I thought, this is great out of toilet paper. I never run out of toilet paper anymore. I was thinking, I didn't even think about the other part of that. So, yeah, it's, just, it's really all about trade-offs. You know, there's really no one security policy for everyone. Some people yeah. may not care if they're child is being recorded 24 seven and attackers are seeing that. Some people may generally yeah. not care. Some people may want to have the convenience and may not want to spend the time to put in the, uh, the effort to do all the kind of configuration and yeah. playing with the technology. Oh my gosh, oh, we could talk to man. you all day about this. There's <laughs> so terrified. many things to talk yeah. about, but we have, we have to go. So Paul Gazillo, <laughs> sure. thank you so much yeah. for joining us and maybe we'll have you back to talk more in sure. detail about Anytime. some of the yeah. stuff that we're, we're going to have you back about. to both of our houses. <laughs> and we're going to need security because yeah, exactly. I feel like everyone's watching me <laughs> oh now. My God. Paul, thank you so yeah. much. And thank that is going to do it for this edition of Florida's Fourth Estate. I'm Ginger Gadsden. My name's Matt Austin. We'll see you next time. Peace. That was great, man. Hey, thanks. Oh, that's so much. Yeah, that was really? fun. Yeah.